Right, begin. Okay. The theory of evolution, right? Called evolution by or through or via natural selection, and it was discovered, is that the right word? The theory was introduced by who? Charles Darwin. Good, favourite, one of my heroes. Charles <coughs> Darwin came up. There was another gentleman called Lamarck, and he suggested something else. Let me come back to that at the end. Good question. Charles Darwin suggested that life has evolved on this planet by a series of quite simple steps, even though it's quite a fantastically big thing. All right? He suggested, and these key words down this side, you must include in any answer. All right? You will tend to get an evolution question, and it will be at least four marks. If you're not including these words, you're not getting it. All right? Almost write these down the side of the paper for the, exact, for the evolution question, and then write them down. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to try to explain the concept. In any population, there is competition. Okay? These three are supposed to be horses. I want you to help work with that one. These horses, as in any population, show variation. What I've tried to show is that they're slightly different heights, these horses. And they've got slightly different lengths of neck. So first point, in any given population, there is variation in their characteristics, all right? And to add to that variation, sometimes the genes mutate. Now, mutation is a change in the DNA, and DNA codes for proteins. I hope we remember that. Sometimes a change in the DNA makes a different protein. And that different protein could, for example, cause a giraffe to have a really long neck. Now, I know you think I'm stretching the, the, the realms of possibility here, but there will still be some mutations that will lead to changes in the individuals. Now, I hope you can see that by this mutation, I'm going to call it in horse A. This mutation makes him or her better at reaching the leaves of the tree. Yes or no? Yes. yes. We say that mutation makes him better adapted for competition. All right? Do you see how that is true there? Okay. This will mean, this is the pen of death. If you cannot feed, you can't get to the leaves. This one is probably going to struggle. And maybe on a good day, if this horse really stretches its neck, it might survive because it might get some food. So almost the best adapted survive because they compete, they get food. And therefore, our two very long necked horses are left, they've survived, they may as well reproduce. What else are they going to do? And let's not be honest, that's why we're here, that's if you're a biologist. So these two survive and reproduce. Two long-necked horses are likely to have offspring that have long necks. Hi, Dad. <laughs> I too, Dad, have got your long necked sheep. And over time, 
as the long-necked individuals survive and keep reproducing, you develop far more, and I'm going to try and show something called the gene pool now, you develop a set of genes where most of the individuals, and I'm going to try to show the genes as an L, where most of the individuals have the long necked allele. Whereas before, if I was to draw, draw the gene pool originally, we had variety, long, medium, short necks. So evolution has led to the change in the gene pool where the most of the genes in the population show long necks. And that is how horses, and I'm stretching it here, became giraffes. That is one of the evolutionary branches that we suggest, okay? Do you understand that as a concept so far? Yeah. Can I now remind you of the key words and you have a look at them again? Where does where the mutation occur in that diagram? Mm -hmm. Was it a giraffe at the start? Oh, no. no. And what did the mutation do to this horse? Gave it a long neck. Good. Okay. Now, what I want to introduce to you is something that again will come up on your exam. This diagram is an evolutionary tree. Okay? This has been this has come from bite size, so if there's any copyright issues, just take that out. I'm giving you the kudos, it's bite size, right? This diagram you need to understand. It is supposedly like a tree with a trunk at the bottom where we say that all the other organisms came from, but that this Organism at the bottom was the common ancestor. In other words, that's where all these organisms came from. Every time there is a branch, it's trying to show that a new species is being formed. And as you go up the evolutionary tree, that is time passing. So almost this organism here is the oldest organism and as you're going up and the newer organisms were formed earlier all right now one thing you need to be aware of and this is what i'm trying to demonstrate if i had to take this box and this is a typical exam question a and b are the most closely related species because they are the two closest branches on the evolutionary tree. Or rather, if I was to say to you which species is the most closely related to A, you would say B. Alright? You wouldn't plump for any of these because they're on a different branch. The problem comes if you are given a question that says... Which species is most closely related to G? And I hope you will see that there are three on that same branch, but the F is the most closely related. Do you see that? That is about as tough as it will get for you on that, those questions. All right, so back again. Common ancestor is the organism at the bottom. They all share that common ancestor. A branch represents when a new species was formed. And the closer the branches are together, the more closely related the species. Yes or no? Good. Right. Questions? Stop it. 